Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media and I'm here joined by Mike Darlington, the CEO of Monster Cat today. Uh, we're gonna do what I'm kinda wanna call a different kind of interview. Uh, we were talking about setting this up a little bit and we were talking about how interviews are kind of boring for the most part. Uh, and so what we could do what we could do to like spice it up, what would it be? And so we're gonna play uh, Smash today, <laughs> uh, some good old Super Smash Bros. And so I, my first question is, um, you propose playing Smash. So how good are you actually? Like, am I gonna get stomped here? Uh, I'm not that good. I just thought it would be like more entertaining than looking at us the entire time, but to like look at the screen, especially yeah, yeah. in this like ADHD type of culture we're in now. You know, we would take the TikTok videos now are one side of the an educational part of a video, and then the other side, it's like a mobile video game. Totally. <laughs> just to totally. keep the brain going. So I thought maybe in this case, we could mm -hmm. do it with the uh, Super Smash Yeah, Bros. the Subway Surfers on the side. That's we'll it. That's it. Going. Subway Surfers. That's so, uh, it. yeah. But I mean, you said you weren't that good, but then you just said you beat people 30 and 0 you went on a street. Oh, I, yeah, but that was like, you know, that might have been their problem. That might, <laughs> that might not <laughs> have been my you? skill. That could have been them. Okay. Uh, well, I guess we'll first off here. Uh, who do you main? Like, are we going mains off the bat? What are we uh, like? I'm going to start one of the mains just because I want to warm up and I haven't okay. played it. I'll go with the guy I like for fun. I I, it's been over fun. a year for sure since I've played last. I was actually considering bringing out the N64 version. I, I knew yeah. that I would have like maybe an advantage with the N64 yeah, version. I think I only played N64 once. Uh, and so I'm ready to hop into it. Ready to go? I'm ready to go. I So I also, I used to run Smash tournaments. Oh, uh, no. no. So I, I ran tournaments. You but, didn't tell me this. But I ran them, but it doesn't necessarily mean I'm good. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I ran them, but it doesn't necessarily mean... I'm like nervous right now. <laughs> like I can feel the heart. Oh, you're the one that's I'm the one that's <laughs> this interview has been a long time coming for me where I've just like been I don't know. Oh no. That was a mistake. That was. That it's was okay. absolutely all, all, No. Oh, I'll always stop. Okay. I'm always stuck the first off. Right, I right. you don't get any more. We're stops, warming, though. we're warming up. Yeah. Okay, well I guess we might as well we have uh, get actually, yeah, like, in the interview. I realize we should actually do something. I'm trying to focus so much here. <laughs> but um uh, okay, so for those, I mean, a lot of people know you obviously as the CEO of Monster Cat, but you do a couple other things here and there. And so like what is the day in the life like of a uh, Mike Darlington? What 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 do you do? Yeah, so my uh, role is definitely sh oh god. I'm okay. Yeah. Oh, my role has shifted a lot over the years. Um you know, I don't actually work on the music side whatsoever anymore. It's been it's been years since I touched a song. Mm. Um, you know, I still have great relationships with managers, other labels, you know, publishers, and, and I'll bring in records here and there. But really, my day to day is a lot of management of my senior leadership. It's it's trying to find new opportunities for our business that we might not already be taking advantage of. Um, you know, I work in a lot of uh, innovation roles. So it's it's a lot of like exploration, a lot of science, to be honest with you. Yeah, that's lots of fun. Yeah. Do you do you miss like the like the practical like being one that like signs of records and stuff or <laughs> not really? I think I identified pretty early on I wasn't good at it, so that's why mm. like early on I, I brought in John and, and you know John's always had such a great ear for the music that it was nice to kind of hand it off to somebody who you know in those days was the the heart and soul of Monster Cat. You know mm -hmm. now our our A and R team has grown considerably. Um, Cool. So, you know, we've got multiple people who are constantly, you know, finding great talent, bringing them in, working with them to, oh, what the heck was that? If I didn't turn that, <laughs> that was a, but yeah, like you brought in a, a good team. And then I guess that's really the the telltale sign of a good leader is to know where your, not, not necessarily weakness is, but just where you're not optimal at and where you can. Oh, it's definitely, there's definitely weakness there. I, uh, <laughs> okay. I think, I think I have a better eye for like when an artist is going to, oh, nice one. When they've got like kind of that special sauce, like I could. Oh, that was such a bad roll. Wow. GG. Uh, yeah. Well, thank you for giving me that free stock in the beginning. <laughs> I, I think I have a good eye to tell when an artist has like a really strong brand. When they have kind of that like it factor, I think that's an area I usually have a pretty good eye. Um, musically, though, definitely, you know, I'm not a producer, I'm not technical. Um, I really rely upon the people around me to kind of help to that. Okay, so in between uh, games here, I guess, uh, question, a bunch of just rapid fire questions. I'm going to do right, it. No fire. explanation. Just yeah. tell me one or the other. Uh, dogs or cats? Oh, this is going to be, I'm going to be in so much trouble. I'm a huge dog guy. Like, of course, I'm a, a big fan of cats, but yeah. I would actually have to go dogs. Okay. Uh, Coke or Pepsi? Coke. Good. Uh, Discord or Red? Good. <laughs> you can't judge. <laughs> uh, Discord. Okay. Uh, dubstep or house? Depends on the mood. Um, tech house at the at like a festival these days. Uh, occasionally I'll go to the, like the base stages just to rage out for a bit. But uh, okay. I would say in general, probably house. Okay. Uh, trance or trap? I still love me some trance. 
Okay. Uh, hardcore or DNB? Hardcore DNB. Uh, DNB. Nice. Uh, and then a vinyl or a CD? Vinyl. Okay. Uh, album or EP? Album or EP? Uh, album. Okay. Uh, the second last one, festival or club? If I beat you with Jigglypuff, it's going to be wonderful. <laughs> I actually used to play this matchup all the time. Oh, really? Um, one of my best friends in university played Jigglypuff like profusely. I'm not, I'm not good at Jigglypuff. I just think it'd be funny to play Jigglypuff. <laughs> okay. Um, sorry, what was the last question? Festival uh, or? Festival or club? Uh, festival. Okay. And then finally, uh, Monster Cat or Velocilobster? Uh, definitely Monster Cat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have to ask about the last part, though. What, like... How did Velocilobster even become an option on the table here? Like, I don't know if it was like really an option. I think no. it was kind of just like a joke, but like, you know, it's one of those things when you're on the internet, you're all kind of making jokes together. And, and mm -hmm. I, I don't think it was actually ever going to happen. Okay. But to be fair, like <laughs> at the beginning, and there was no thought really into anything. We were just having fun. Like no, Monster Cat wasn't really the greatest. <laughs> oh, I did myself. Okay, I will make it back up to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, an hour game. even for sure. But with I, I mean, yeah, I specifically remember the April Fools where you guys talked about Lost Lobster for the first time, and yeah. I was just like, "What in the world? That is just horrendous." Yeah, but, it was definitely not the best. I'm happy that we didn't actually uh, go forward with it. You are smoking me here. Uh, it just takes like one hit though, and I'm yeah. dead. Oh. So <laughs> I've not played. I man, what's, so when's the last time you even played Smash before? Then we were saying it had been a while for both of us. It's been a year for uh, for whatever this is. Mm. Ultimate? Ultimate, yeah. That's fair. Sometimes a lot of people ask questions of like, the, uh, oh, if you had to go back in time and do it again, like, what would you kind of do? But like, in a serious sense, like, I'm sure you're happy with where things are now as a label. But if you really had to go back in time and just change one small minor thing or a trajectory that would sort of change where Mobstrat is today, is there a moment in time that you're like, yeah, I would maybe go and go a slightly different direction and try it again this way? I, I don't think it's an issue of like, um, would I have, you know, changed anything of the history? I think that there was times where like the, there could have been a, uh, a fork in the road that would have led to a different result, but that doesn't mean it would have led to a better result or a totally. wrong result. It just would have yeah. been different. Like, you know, for a long time, I really wanted to get into underground music. Mm. I didn't. Uh, wow, that kills. Yeah, that kills. I didn't get into underground music and I kept it as kind of like a, like a passion um, area. So maybe things would have been different in that sense. And then, you know, there were other times in the fork in the road where we could have just stuck to being like that YouTube brand, mm. uh, really like online music uh we could have kept the company really small you know didn't need 60 ish people like we could have been yeah five you know a lot of the people the competitors i kind of came up with stayed as like really small teams and they kind of stuck to doing like one thing mm. so again decisions led to forks in the road that led to where we are today uh but i don't know if there's like a moment where i'd be like that was just wrong you know we, yeah. we we've the idea of innovation the idea of trying new things testing and failing uh, and testing and succeeding has just been a part of the culture, and, and I love that. Um, yeah. So no regrets. That's great. <laughs> I love that. Uh, but in a similar vein, but not quite in the same question, but um, in a bit more of a personal note for you specifically, as CEO of a label like this, um, is there a moment that you said that you thought like this was my greatest success as as a person that owns something? And on the flip side of that, where is a moment you would go? Actually, probably that didn't work as well in the end. In hindsight, you learn from it and, and you and you move on. So biggest success and biggest failure. If you want to get that personal with it, you know this is going to be a controversial answer on the success, but I think the launch of Uncaged and Instinct, and then the acquisition of Silk uh, to kind of create this really balanced ecosystem of music discovery. Like you Absolutely. really, we almost represent almost every form of like mainstream form of dance music yeah absolutely um the the umbrella is real wide and i, I i'm very proud of that because i think that monster gets always been this amazing place for music discovery the amount of times i've seen fans be like i heard this genre or this sound the first time ever via monster cat i think that's really cool so i'm really proud that we took that leap of faith because you know when we first started monster get people said you can only be one genre as a record mm. label you yeah. can only be a dubstep label yeah <clears throat> which is pretty much why, I guess, early days, it was so heavily dubstep. I thought yeah. we really could only be a dubstep label. Mm -hmm. And then we started throwing in other genres here and there. And I realized, I'm like, oh yeah, we can be, you know, more broad. Um, and we started opening up more and more and more. And I think, you know, on Cage Instinct and Silk was the ultimate in showing that you don't have to be, you know, one thing. Um, 
and you can build a great community around that concept of discovery. Yeah. So I'm really proud of that. I think it's great. And that, we'll actually, we'll put the other one on the background for a second. That does lead into the next question I was going to ask. Um, again, if you had to make a fourth brand or sub label kind of, what I know sub label is not the right word, but like a fourth brand of sorts, you've got Uncaged Instinct Silk. What would you name the fourth one and what would it be? Okay, one, I got to ask you a question. Did you yeah. make this character? <laughs> what I is this? this? I thought for a minute they added <laughs> Jinx to the game. I'm like, I've never seen this. No, this is, uh, this is, well, this come is stand Jinx. beside you. That is, that is hideous. <laughs> it is. Oh quite my hideous. God. I, uh, I played Meat Sword Fighter for a little bit. I mained her. And so I was like, I oh, you know, let's just make a meme of someone that's that so. That is awful. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> probably more mature, uh, on the sound, probably leaning into the underground a bit more. I don't think it would be like straight up techno. Okay. Uh, I think it would be more of a accessible form of um, kind of underground music. I think uh, I think I O was doing a really cool thing. Mm, yeah, um, you know, he was a good dude. So yeah. I think that was opening the doors for a discovery of a sound that uh, you know a large amount of people were just unaware of. Um, That's right. Especially in North America, I wouldn't maybe not in Europe. I think in Europe you kind of That's grown up with it for sure. Yeah, um, but in North America for sure. So that might be a route of that could would should i don't know it could have been somebody we could have done <laughs> and it, who knows maybe we still will one day okay and if you had to put a name to it just a hypothetical on the spot uncaged instinct silk and it would be something so if you look at the naming of uncaged instinct and silk there actually are all animalistic there's an yeah it's a it's a dis, it's a description that can relate to you know silk you think silky smooth like the mm -hmm. fur of cats you think yep. in the instinct the natural instinct of an yep. animal and uncaged of course you know the mm -hmm. release of it so i would probably go in a similar direction i don't know what it would be at the moment um the naming of these brands was so much fun silk was of course easier yes uh, of yeah. course because they've existed as silk for so long mm -hmm. it just was perfect like when i you know i'd always wanted to do more you know, beautiful, ambient, uh, melodic music and, and silk like was just perfect. So yeah, it great. worked out really well. And it actually at the moment it's it's performing as well, if not better than any of the other, you know, labels at the moment. So we're seeing huge growth there. Uh, this is sort of uh, on similar to the silk vein though. Um, it's no one talking about it. How did that like acquisition even come? <laughs> okay, we're gonna restart this whole one. <laughs> Um, on the similar line of Silk, um, mm -hmm. if you don't mind talking about it, how did that acquisition even like come about? Like, is are you allowed to talk about that kind of thing at this point? Or I'm probably allowed? I, I strangely, I don't know if I remember clearly. <laughs> I know that my business partner Ari was definitely really uh, interested in, in M and A at the time, or mergers and acquisitions, and we were kind of looking for another label to bring in. I don't remember exactly how it. We had we had known some of the team members there for like prior. Um, I don't remember the exact moment though that this kind of came together. Mm. Okay, sort of an, a, a, over time, there's like a like a hey, this could be a thing. Yeah, and it just turned into it, it. Just it just worked out in the end. That's great. Okay, and then sort of returning back to the other question again, if you want to keep personal with it, what would you say is maybe the biggest failure of of what you you've done as a as a label owner and manager? Yeah, um, you know, this journey has been an absolute roller coaster there is like no question in my mind that i went through some of the highest points of my life and the lowest points of my life not always related to monster cat it's just being an adult being a human you know go through ups and downs mm -hmm. but i remember that there was definitely periods of time where like i was in a low point and i got so frustrated with the monster cat community mm. like i just didn't want to be a part of it i yeah. uh I just shut down my socials. I wasn't really responding to people. I wasn't really in the Discord. I just stopped caring. Um, I was like, I'm going to do my thing. I don't really care what people think. And I think that that was a huge failure as a leader. Uh, I think it's human. Um, yeah, it was definitely a, a, a definitely a failure and something I regret is when I've disconnected. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, and then also on similar line of that, I... Uh, <laughs> When you talk about the community, yes, the community is uh, like at times the greatest thing in the world, at sometimes a little annoying, and all the time a crazy devoted fan. Mm -hmm. um, how do you think? Like, why is that? Like, why have I been a fan of, of Monster Cat since early 2014? I've listened to Monster Cat every single day. I've been keeping up with releases for how was that? Almost what eight years now? Almost nine years now? Mm -hmm. And so it's like, what about Monster Cat makes it so like? 
I don't know, just lovable and makes the community so different compared to any other label. I think part of it is definitely the fact, you know, that we were able to continue evolving and changing our sound and just growing in a, in a novel way. I think that that the thing about dance music is it's very natural to go through phases of loving different sounds in uh, genres and yeah. you fall in love and fall out of love with artists and labels quite often. Uh, fortunately, be oh, why did I do that? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, why did I do that? Fortunately, with Monster Cat, we've like been able to continue that that evolution. So I think that as our fans have grown up, we've grown up with it. With, wow, that was crazy. That's grown up with forcing. them. Yeah, I didn't know that that was possible. Yeah. Um, so it means that it doesn't get stale, you know, for the better or for worse. And then, you know, really leaning into having different places where the community can kind of come together meant that these sub communities formed, which mm -hmm. they kept it interesting for people because it wasn't just like yeah. relied upon us. You know, the memes, the content, everything that yeah. happens, happens at the fan level as well. Yeah, totally. And I think I, res I like, I agree with that sentiment completely. I felt like I grew up with Monster Cat of being this, like, small little, relatively small YouTube kind of just only thing to now this multi-branded, like, massive uh, force of nature in the music industry. And so I, I resonate with that completely. And so, and I, I've also loved that, like, obviously a lot of other labels try to have that, like, family aspect of stuff, um, but that's been so ingrained in in Monster Cat's just history for so long of being, like, the Monster Cat family specifically. And so it just, like, regardless of whether you're not all, <laughs> you're an artist or a fan, it feels like it's uh -oh. giant family. What's going to happen here, Ed? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if you were going to uh, <laughs> go far enough. I thought I wasn't going to get that far, too. <laughs> all right. Well, it happened. I lost to this jinx. Ah, <laughs> I'm gonna have nightmares about that. That is that's the point. It's emotional damage and yeah, you uh, mental actually damage. you did mental damage. I'm I'm mentally out of it now. <laughs> <laughs> that's the point. But um, yeah. Uh, another question. Hit me. In terms of Monster Cat and Smash. Yeah. Uh, if Monster Cat was a Smash character, uh, what one song from the entire discography of the label would you pick to be its theme song? One singular song. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god got thousands of songs to pick from i don't think i've ever been asked a harder question <laughs> this is the hardest for a theme them. song like when the game song. the loads up and then yeah like, yeah loads up it. and it's a, instead of you hear of whatever other mario theme or something like that it's <laughs> weirdly my brain wanted to go to like like early monster cat songs yeah. i don't know why I, like razor sharp came to mind Ooh, <laughs> like, yes uh I, it, what's something that's kind of like very you know, it'd be hilarious, actually. Crab Rave. Yeah. <laughs> crab Rave D&B remix. Yes. <laughs> that yes, can be it. Yes, that could be it. would have a, a Crab Rave uh, skin of some sort. One of the, the Crab Rave D&B remix would be perfect because it's yeah. never going to come out. Yeah. What, what about that? Where is, is this, uh, is this John, remix? Is this John G has it. He just will never give it to us. Is, yeah. And it's an actually like done release that it will never. Not, it'll never come out. No, it'll never come out. <laughs> So we'll, we'll hear it maybe at shows and festivals, but that song will never come out. But I think it's hilarious. It brings such a smile to my face whenever I get to hear it. <laughs> well, we don't get to hear it, so we don't get to experience it. You know, you've heard it at Compound. It's played a few times okay. at Compound. Okay, and t our, today is actually the day of Compound for yes, us. it is. It'll be the day of video release, but um, well, do you know if it'll be played today? Well, I guess I you have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea. Do all the artists have access to that Like, as soon as they no, sign up? No, the they label, don't. They get, uh, unfortunately, here is the d and That's actually really reference. smart. I should probably <laughs> do that. It's like a small little token of, uh, of appreciation joining the Moscat family is, is here is the Crabber remix. I like that. And that's a good idea. Some of them have no idea what the memes are, but that's... I don't super. know what Rob does. <laughs> yeah, Rob's a, a very interesting, fun character that I don't really know how to play, but I'm going to smash buttons and see how that goes. But, yeah. Wow. So there. <laughs> Yeah, that nope. leaves it. Oh no. Okay. Don't don't kill yourself. Okay. It's fine. It's, it's fair. It's fair. It's I fair. All's fair in love and dubstep. <laughs> uh, okay. So if there were uh, a couple artists, let's say three artists that you felt like need more recognition in the music scene today, who would those three artists be? Any genre, any whatever. It could be Monster Cat, non Monster Cat artists that you're like absolutely loving right now. You're like, more people should know about these artists. Uh, I think Chill is blowing up. Yes. I really, really like Chill. Mm -hmm. I think she's got like everything oh. um just catching a trend great personality you know great makes great content you know i, I think one of the areas that I'm, I'm really loving right now is is artists who can develop content around themselves 
I yeah. think the reality is short form video content especially is is critical and it's very common for artists to say like I'm a musician so I'm not going to do that mm. and yeah. I just think unfortunately the game has changed and yeah. I don't know how that's you know I just I just don't know how you're going to get by without having to play the game as well so yeah, uh, I think Crank that's another example of somebody who's just mastered it mm -hmm. uh, I love when I have him pop up on like TikTok or Instagram like it's, <laughs> I know it's always going to be amazing yeah uh, and you can see it's like working in his ticket sales as well 100 percent. yeah i was just looking at his intro the other day and i was like man he's got so like such a massive following because he's doing like the fun random socials of taking taylor swift's anti-hero yeah. and making it uh, a meme but also dubstep banger and that was bad um and so yeah i i think for sure that's just that's the nature of the game and as a content creator myself i've experienced that too where you can't even just make regular any videos you have to be on the short form content you have to be just on that grunt i don't have my phone on me i was gonna check my uh my recently plays to see if anybody is like mm. completely in my uh you know repeated yeah. list because it's the third is not really coming to mind of like who i would say is up next or who is going to go that's fair uh as you kind of look down the road for monster cat i know you're not a, you're obviously in a different mm -hmm. position and and where you're uh and what your involvement is but um what kind of are we thinking forward forward thinking about what we'd love or what you'd love to see happen with the label i can't believe you didn't die from that mm -hmm. uh, i know it's a broad question no 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 the future I, I, to do it too I, I, and i you know i still want to see us evolving more in the live event space i think we've had some real uh growth in that area and it's such a difficult one uh, especially globally like internationally um south america especially is an area that oh nice one i think we have a lot of opportunity to grow in still mm -hmm. I think you're seeing a lot more South American artists appear mm -hmm. on the label, especially yeah, out of Brazil right now. Yeah, seriously. Instinct is just full of it right now. And well, it's they're awesome. pumping out great music, so seriously. it's uh, it's it's easy. Um, so I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised to see further expansion on the event side, uh, and just like really continuing to focus on developing artists and helping them break through. I think is is just critical. Uh, it's harder than ever. I, I think I've said this before on Twitter. I think it's the hardest it's ever been in the music industry to be mm. a musician. Not just from yeah. the sense of you have to be, you know, a marketer or branding master, you know, short form video content, personality, like mm -hmm. great music. You kind of need it all at the moment. I think that's very difficult. Yeah. There's like, yeah, it's just, it's so, and then of course on the revenue side, it, it's tighter than ever. Uh, there's just mm -hmm. so much content that is that being released all the time that it cuts into like the revenue that an artist can earn, uh, the CPM rates and RPMs Absolutely. are dropping because of that. So you know, it's just tough to be a musician right now. So I want to make sure that the time we put into artists helps them break through uh, and gives them a sh it gives them a shot to, you know, to really make it. Yeah, absolutely. So that's an area I want us to kind of keep focusing on is picking our picking our uh, picking our fighters. You know, <laughs> picking the fighters. And how like on a similar vein, how does the like the transition to a more streaming culture of music had an impact on on stuff like that? Like it just is. I obviously it, it it makes it harder in some areas, but then, like I don't know, I'm, that's another broad question. But how? Oh, so what? what yeah, are you yeah. Saying? Like uh, you're saying that uh, going from like sales to streaming. Well, or? yeah. Like we'll think about the history of like Moshcat and how like it was very like kind of YouTube dominated. Well, compilations were easy. This, yeah, because compilations were a very clear metric of like this time we sold ten thousand, this time 100%. we sold a hundred thousand. Like we were very very obvious how things were doing. Um, then it went in the era of like, did you get into a playlist? Mm. Uh, and that was big. And now it's, it's much tougher. You're trying to hit trends, algorithms, um, you know, making sure you're getting into the reshares and the, um, you know, the radio play radio modes and whatnot. It's, it's very, very difficult right now. Yeah. You know, I, I remember that there was a period of time after the compilations where I just wasn't comfortable to ever look at an artist and be like. You know, I I, did, I know we're going to be able to put X amount of views on the content. Mm. Yeah. Um, and now more than ever, I, I can't promise an artist if a track is going to succeed to like, you know, the, the point of like millions and millions of impressions. Like, it's just, it's so tough. Wow. <laughs> I, no, 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 don't apologize. You, DD you also is, up there. DD is my main. Oh, is it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I should have known that. <laughs> I go uh, pink DD and then I go queen DD is, is my is okay, what now I, that I know it's your main. <laughs> uh, but yes, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna run it back. Uh, I'm gonna play Ike after this okay, against okay. DD. Can okay, we do one last final one of the of the mains versus the mains? Yeah. I like that. I, mean, I appreciate that we we switched up characters each time as well. Mm -hmm. So like ones yeah. that we clearly 
we're better or worse at. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, is there a, a certain trend in the music industry right now that you just don't love? Well, I don't love the short form video content mm. requirements aspect. Uh, yeah. I don't love that at all, but I, I understand it. I get it. I appreciate that content is, is king. Um, doesn't mean I agree with it. Yeah, that's fair. So that's probably my answer. Um, I, I think that, you know, this is going to be controversial for sure. I'm very curious to see how AI technology can be used effectively as an art, a creative to mm. improve creativity, to, yeah. to make it more efficient, to uh, allow for things to occur that has never been able to happen before. Um, I think that this instant, like anything that has ever touched any form of AI is seen as this like awful thing that's going to kill everybody is, is pretty uh, limiting. You know, I'm a technologist. I'd love to see people evolve. Yeah. Um, I love to see new things tested and tried. So, you know, I also think there's like a toxicity right now where every artist, they, their album art is like inspected to see was AI used. Yes. And even yeah. when it hasn't been used, you'll see like every comment, this is AI. It's yeah. not. Yeah. Um, that's not, that's not pushing us forward as a, as a, as a human race. Like we're not figuring out new things. We're not solving problems. If we're just trying to tear people down for trying new things. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I appreciate people evolving and trying things. Now, of course, there's going to be bad actors mm -hmm. in any in, new in, technology in any industry. They're going to just, you know, copy paste a song and an album art and then hit distribute like and yeah. do it 3000 times in a month. That will yeah. absolutely happen. I'm not mm -hmm. going to pretend it won't. Yeah. But hopefully some great, you know, creativity comes out of it uh, that allows for us to, you know, move forward. Yeah, sure. I agree. I think AI can be a super powerful tool. Um, and especially using the right hands, I think it's just, yeah, be marvelous. Um, is there like a, a line for you then there that feels like right now you feel like there is a certain line or you're like, uh, no, like I'm not quite sure where that is yet. Yeah. On the visual side, it's like, it, it's, it's, it, when it's obvious, I have a problem with it. Like I, if it was at least 50% human made, I think I'm okay with it. Okay. Um, and it has to be made by a creative that I, I've seen there, you know, their chops type of thing mm -hmm. um so that's kind of like where i personally draw the line i don't have like a hard set rule and i don't think we have a, a rule like yeah uh and then on the flip side of that question uh what is your like favorite thing about the industry right now like what are you like on absolutely on fire for like this is oh i don't know what i did there like was that like this is just i love this kind of yeah culture. I, actually the, I know exactly what it is uh, what I'm loving right now is that like nearly every form of dance music has a home and it's working. Mm. And I don't remember a time where I felt that way. You know, whether it's trap, whether it's drum and bass, dubstep, house music, techno, you know, uh, happy, hardcore, hard style. There's like a home for it. And I think yeah. that that's so cool. And it's like, it's not just like it's living in this little niche of five people. It's like, it's got festivals, it's got attendees, like artists are, you know, they're bubbling up. Some are really breaking. I think that's incredible. Yeah. That's uh, super fun. Yeah. Uh, now I'm going to turn into the interviewer. You're right? entering the interview. Uh, that was fun. Yeah, yeah. How did you discover Monster Get in the first place? Uh, I felt like I'm the classic uh, a case of uh, it was a Minecraft YouTube nice, outro. Nice. It was Which one. Which Captain one? Captain Sparkles. Dude, Jordan's the best. I'm still yeah. in touch with Jordan. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I was a Captain Sparkles video in 2014. Um, I first kind of like went and discovered Monster Get the day 16 dropped. Uh, the day okay. like 16 expedition drop yep. was I was like I think I looked at the subreddit for the first time and I was like oh what is this actual thing and so uh, that was my my very first experience with Mouse Cat and then I've now been pretty much a devoted fan for wow almost nine years now is that right math yeah something like that but uh, yeah so that's 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 my journey to Monster Cat nice so and what was like a moment where you're like that was smart that like I have Actually, no, here's two, two points. What was a moment where you're like, that was really cool? And a moment where you at first were skeptical. You're like, I don't I disagree with this. Where eventually mm. you came around to it and you're like, actually, that was sick. Interesting. Uh, moment that was cool. I really loved what you guys did with Karma Fields. Okay. Um, I loved the, like, at the time it was like the super, it felt like, it felt quite experimental. It felt underground. It, oh, I forgot the time. Uh, it just like, it felt fun like there was mm -hmm. the i remember listening on one of the podcast episodes that was still the podcast yeah, yeah. all the wild and then karma feels like i thought, feels I, had, like, oh, I, thought like, I had a jump 
took over the podcast yeah, yeah. at one point and then like had these songs and the remix every after one of the podcasts a new remix person was there for the build the mm-hmm. cities remix package and it just felt like a like a thing that i hadn't really seen before um at the time and so that was something that i absolutely ad- why am i keep doing that uh, i adored and loved nice but uh skeptical at first um i would say dropping the compilations mm-hmm. so i was i don't think i've ever been super like angry vocal online uh I, I just don't think that's sort of who i am but i definitely was like oh like that's interesting like i'm shocked that the compilations are ending but in hindsight now that like that really is where the industry was going and it wasn't a need for the compilations it was more individualistic releases oh gg oh, oh. do the full smash <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, and so I realized now like compilations and and I also right after that Uncage was just Uncage for a little bit, yeah, and then it became the Instinct Uncage split, and that I was actually pretty on board with that right away. I was like, oh, Sick. this is great because I'm more of a I'm more of an Instinct fan of sorts. Yeah, like, yeah. that's my style of music I generally listen to. And so like I love Steven from before. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Didrik I was a big fan of, and so like all these artists have come out. I was like, oh my gosh, this is like absolutely incredible. So um, that was a moment that I was like, yes, 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 uh, fantastic. Oh, I'm really happy to hear that. I'm that's I'm down to run it back. Like, uh, I uh, I'm happy to hear on the compilation side. I, yeah, that was a difficult one. It was like partially operational that was causing us issues. Partially like the industry trend was it was just moving away from it. Yeah, I would still love to do something with compilations, but I don't. I've never been able to come up with a way to do it in like an innovative form mm-hmm. that makes sense. And it, I, I always worry from like an artist perspective when an artist ends up on a compilation with like 50 other artists that their tracks just like get overshadowed. But at the same time, like putting a compilation together of songs that are already all released is just a playlist at that point. So I've never really understood yeah. where I'm yeah. sure that there's a model out there that I just haven't figured out yet. That's that will fair. be amazing. And maybe one day it'll come back. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Uh, the one thing I will say, I was, I remember a long time, I didn't know if you know this, but uh, someone, I didn't even, I don't even, maybe it was you, I can't remember. Someone on the Moscow team had forever stated that the last compilation was going to be Thank You. The name of it was going to be Thank You. I know this, so it probably wasn't you then. Someone on Reddit for forever ago, they were like, someone asked, maybe they were like, was, what's not. the name of the last compilation you're going to have? And, and someone said, it's going to be called Thank You. It'll be like, whatever, like, oh, like 63 Thank You or something like that. And so when I remember when I saw finale, I was mm. like, wait a second. I'm like, is this, this isn't a thank you. But that, I guess compilations did continue though. They were just different. And so, um, but yeah. And I mean, I love the whole just storyline of the monster cat and the, the evil cat. Did the evil cat ever have a name? I don't think so. Uh, to be honest, I never fell in love with that storyline. Really? I was like, I was kind of happy when it ended. <laughs> it was just one that I just didn't understand where it was going to go. That's, the end. Fair. That's um, fair. But yeah, you know, maybe I'll maybe thank you will be the final one. I don't know. It's nice. still possible. I guess that's we're not we're not done yet. We're still here. We're still that's playing true. Smash Bros. That's true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> we're still. I mean, we're gonna revisit this in like ten years, and we're gonna talk about thank you or something like that. I am, uh, but yeah. How uh, I know you're. You talked about being online quite a bit. Um, how much do you like? Are you in the forums and stuff? Because I see you in there quite a bit, like Discord and Reddit. And so is that something that you're like, I have to like have a healthy amount of and a healthy amount like oh, not it's not healthy. Or... I'm perpetually online. <laughs> like but usually I'm like working on a, a new concept, new project. Yeah. I'm like Yeah. I'm like working with creatives to try to solve issues. Yeah. Um so I'm always online, whether I should be in like our Discord or our Reddit or whatever, like that probably I could minimize more. Mm. Um, but I, you know, in the last, I'd say year, I felt more connected to the community and I felt more like at peace. Yeah, that's um, great. So I felt more comfortable to have conversations. For a long time, I was like, I was I was definitely uncomfortable to speak with the community um, after I went through the period of like, I don't want to be here. Yeah. Uh, whether like, I didn't want things to get taken out of context. You know, I can be quite, you know, bold sometimes in some of the things I say, and I just didn't want to end up in a position where I was going to be at like war when I was in a mood of like wanting to be creative and do other things yeah. in my life. So. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I felt good lately though. If I've enjoyed uh, meeting the new members of the community, I've enjoyed, oh God. Oh, that was nice. Th- that was dangerous. Um, but yeah, I've also always appreciated how, like just how present you've been online uh, because you're not like this, uh, like, I don't even know what word, like this like, forbidden deity of some person mm. like sometimes the ceos are just seen as like this someone that no one is allowed to talk to you're not allowed to like see ever but like no that just that veil is was like is torn easily with you because you're just so present and just having casual conversations online so i've always appreciated that about um uh yeah just presence online 
Oh, oh. yes. <laughs> uh, I appreciate yeah. that. No, dude, it, it's been it's been a journey. Uh, and I, I would say I'm more of a co-founder than a CEO, to be honest That's with right. you. And there is a there is a major difference between those two. Um, you know, in, if in some future state I'm not a part of Monster Cat, eventually one day it's bound to happen. I think Monster Cat's gonna outlive me. Mm. Uh, I won't move into a CEO role anywhere else. I'm not, I'm not, that's not what I'm interested in doing. I'm interested in like f- being a builder, finding new opportunities, you know, working in new technologies. I love being a co-founder, absolutely adore it. So maybe that's why you get a different vibe for myself like as a quote unquote CEO. Yeah. For the longest time, I didn't even want to use the term CEO. Yeah. It felt like really weird. I was like co-founder everywhere, but as the company got bigger and bigger and bigger and we started to have layers of hierarchy, the name kind of like, made more sense i guess sure. it's same same vein why what i didn't let anyone call us like a record label for mm-hmm. forever i'm like i don't want to be a record label we're a creative entertainment media company a monster cat media <laughs> yeah so bringing it back media. bringing it back um but you know sometimes the reality of you know what you actually are kind of comes out <laughs> yeah i like that a lot well thank you for the time uh, i appreciate uh just the time to, to yeah take time of your day and let this happen and have this interview and so i'm very thankful and um thanks for the games of smash of course uh, i appreciate that i came out on top of yeah it. yeah i, I yeah. think you won overall but at least in the end I, I got the dub on one of them against yeah. ddd i'll give that to you so thank you uh but yeah thanks for your interview Till next time. Yeah, till next time. <laughs> i'll give you flashbacks to the podcast that just i was i said your voice even at the end of the podcast Someone says till next time at the end of the podcast, and that just like in every en- every like episode, me. yeah, the old ep- the old Moscow podcast. <sighs> it has been so long. I don't know. It's either myself or Dan. I don't even remember Dan, anymore either. But, yeah. but that just like oh, Dan is like, Dan's the later days guy. Yeah, yeah. Later oh days. yes, yes. Okay, yeah. yeah. So I well, it must have been you then for forever. But um, but yeah. So thank you very much. No problem. <laughs> until next time.